everybody, welcome to the Essential Owl. Erin here to make another cold process soap. Today, I am completing my newest custom order that I had. It's the same customer that almost always orders from me. And I had quite a few repeats. I think that they're going to be repeated in pretty much every batch that she orders. She has a couple, like the Fresh Snow, which is the blue and the black. She can't keep that on her shelves. That fragrance is just amazing, you guys. If you haven't tried that Fresh Snow fragrance from Brambleberry, I highly recommend it. If you like like the clean cotton and, and that sort of smell, I highly recommend that. But there are a few like that that she orders every single time. They do very well. So I don't want to keep filming those over and over and over again. Because I know that a couple of them, I think I've done th three times on this channel now. And the rest of them, I've done most of them twice. So <laughs> I'm not going to make you guys sit through that. I don't change much with those batches. So I don't, I don't want to keep repeating the same soaps over and over again every couple of weeks but we do have two new seasonal soaps and actually I say two it's really one soap but I'm making a double batch of it I think what I'm going to do is do one batch at a time just to make sure that I don't run into any acceleration problems or anything like that because when I'm working with one I tend to, I feel like it's just going to work out better for me just knowing how I work. But I will still sh show the entire process for both soap batches, but I will speed through it the second time around. But this is a seasonal soap. It is a fall soap I'm very excited for. And we are going to be using this fragrance right here. This is Artemis from Nurture Soap. And you guys, this smells so very good. I will put the fragrance notes on the screen so that you can see them for yourselves. Now this does have, if you can see right there, it's got vanillin in it, 2%. So that will discolor to a light to medium brown depending on your recipe and your usage rate. You can use, this has a really high usage rate. You can use up to 6%. Now I only put about an ounce in each of my batches, not because of the size of my batch. Really I could have used an entire bottle and a little bit over an entire bottle in each batch, but because I want, well, it's a couple of reasons really. I want to try to minimize the discoloration that's going to happen. I don't know if that's going to work out or not. I'm still going to color it anyway, but we'll, we'll just have to see what happens. But also because this is quite a strong fragrance. It's not overpowering and it's not unpleasantly loud. <laughs> But it is a loud fragrance in my opinion. So I felt like doing half of a bottle in each one is more than enough. So just throwing that out there. Now the colors that we're going to be using today. The main base I'm going to color with this Maya Gold Mica. And again this might not matter in the end if it discolors a whole lot but this is that Maya gold it is so pretty and sparkly look at that just super nice and it's somewhere in the middle of gold and bronze it's it's very very pretty and I also have a new one that I'm going to try also from Nurture Soap. Oops, I'm sorry, I bumped the camera. But this is called Sugar and Spice. This is a really, really pretty color. If I can get it open without spilling it everywhere. But this is a very... How would I describe this color? I'm not sure how it's coming across on the camera. I'm at a strange angle to the camera. But it's a reddish, pinkish brownish color. It's very, very nice. And I thought that those two colors together would make a really nice fall soap. Unless it discolors, then it's probably not really going to matter. But we're going to pretend like it's going to matter. <laughs> so 
that's all that I have to say about it, I think. I think I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into the making of this soap. Oh, actually, there is something that I wanted to mention. So I made my lye water solution ahead of time, of course, and what I did was I put it in the freezer. Now, this isn't so much a problem for me and my household because I don't have children and the only people that live in this house are me and my husband. And when he sees one of these containers, he knows that it's lye water and not to mess with it. But I do not recommend you putting it just in your regular fridge or freezer if you do have kids or other people in your household because they could very potentially open it up, open your fridge or refrigerator, whichever, wherever you have it, and spill it on themselves or drink it or spill it on your food or anything like that. Please put it somewhere else. But the funny thing is, is I put it in the freezer and then I forgot about it. So right now, this Lye Water Solution, I hope you can see, is sitting at 53 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is quite cold i don't usually and it's actually been sitting out for about an hour in a regular room temperature room and it's still only at 50. when i first pulled it out they were at about 33 34 degrees fahrenheit and i wanted to give it the chance to sort of warm up a little bit I've never soaked with temperatures this low. Now, the base is at 77, the base oil. So, there will be a little bit of heat transfer there. So, I don't think it's going to really be a problem or anything. I've never soaked with temperatures that low. So, I have no idea what that is going to do. <laughs> if it's going to do anything at all. If you're uncomfortable with Temperatures that low if you're dumb like me and you forget <laughs> you forget that you made lye water solution and put it in the fridge or freezer and it gets really cool like that. You can always wait for it to come up to room temperature again before you proceed. So without further ado, let's jump right into the making of the soap. we're at a very thin trace I'm just kind of playing with it a little bit to make sure I'm not getting a false trace or anything like that oh and by the way this is a new stick blender attachment I finally replaced my stick blender guys <laughs> how about that it's almost like I was being responsible and doing the right thing <laughs> So I'm just going to take this off for just a second. I'm just going to set it on the table because, frankly, it's a mess anyway. I'm just going to pour off a little bit for our accent color. Not a whole, whole lot, but, of course, we know that doesn't really mean anything with me. These two batches could come out looking super duper different from one another, and that's just, that's just how I roll sometimes, you guys. <laughs> okay, so... Our accent color, I'm gonna go in there, and that is the sugar and spice. It's almost like a darker, slightly more reddish version of the Summer Crush Mica that I really like. And then our base is Maya Gold. Now I am going to stick blend this a little bit more, and I am getting some acceleration. I don't know if that's from the fragrance or maybe from the temperatures that I've got, but the fragrance does say it does not accelerate. So I'm just gonna mix these up really fast.
All right, you guys, that's all the mixing I'm going to do. I think that we're good and mixed in. I don't see any big clumps or anything like that. So that is great. I'm going to put my stick blender in some water here and just blend it for just a second to clean it. <laughs> going to disassemble that for just a second and let that sit now the good thing is is that it did loosen up some and look at these colors you guys aren't these so pretty look at that gold it's so metallic and shimmery hopefully it's not too blurry for you and then this sugar and spice mica now that I've got it mixed in it looks really 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 close to another red that I have but it is a little bit more pink than that but it's a nice fallish color if you ask me I'm trying to remember the name of that my god that's gonna drive me nuts let me see ruby red it looks very similar to ruby red but it is more pink than the ruby red but it is pretty close let me just clean up my mess here all right, we're still staying nice and fluid. So, hopefully this is clear for you guys. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a drop swirl. So I'm going to put down a base of gold. I don't know why I said it that way. But I did. And then come in with some of this pinkish red. I think this is going to be really pretty. Hopefully it doesn't discolor too much. But even then, brown is a good fall color. So maybe it won't be too bad. Do another pass with this. There we go. Now I'm going to Come back in with my gold. And now it's time to scrape our containers out. I'm sorry if my hand is in the way. This is not really that interesting. I'm just scraping out this container to get out some of this gold. I really want mostly gold to be on the top with this soap. It doesn't have to be completely gold on top, but I would like gold to be the main standout color here. So now I'm just going to kind of tap that down with the spatula like this, just to push everything into its corners and kind of distribute that red, that gold, sorry. And I am going to take some of the pinkish red Actually, the more I look at it, the more red it looks. It looks really, really similar to that ruby red. So, if you've already got ruby red, I don't necessarily recommend getting this sugar and spice mica because they are very close. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do with that. Now, actually, let me give this a little bit of a shake. Just a little bit. Now, what I'm gonna do next, now this part should not discolor. I have two little cups here. These have some fractionated coconut oil in them. And in this one, I've got lemon drop yellow. I know that the lighting is in here is terrible. I am so sorry, but lemon drop yellow. And in this one, I've got some really red mica mixed with a little bit of that ruby red for more of a brick red color. And what I'm gonna do, is I'm just going to drip a little bit of this on the top. Hopefully you all can see what I'm doing. I'm just taking my little popsicle stick stir thing here, putting some drips on there. Doesn't have to be perfect, and I'm sorry if I'm shaking the camera. Hopefully, when I cut these in the morning, the lighting will be better. I'm gonna take some of that yellow. I love how the yellow is standing out against that gold base and against the red. I considered doing brown, but I really just wanted to do yellow and red 
for some reason, I guess, because the gold is almost a little bit orange on its own already. And the, the sugar and spice mica sort of looks a little bit brown now that I've got some actual red next to it. Oh, I just threw that out onto myself. Okay, now I'm just gonna take a dropper and I'm going to swirl this and I'm not going to do, well, I was gonna say I'm not gonna do any swirl in particular, but that looks like it was a lie. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to go in and swirl some of this stuff, make sure every little bit is swirled, nothing is left unswirled. And be really careful to try not to over swirl this, but sometimes it gets away from me. Kind of change some of the swirl directions a little. All right. Now, I don't think I need to do any banging because it is quite liquidy still. Well, my tripod just moved on me. Hopefully, you all can see now. But I will bring you in for a close-up. But first, I do want to go ahead and move on to my second batch of this. It might be a little bit different. We will have to see what happens. First, I want to take this excess soap and put it into a little silicone mold that I've just been filling up with the last little scrapings of my last couple of batches because I do not like to waste. All right, so I've got everything ready to go for the second batch. So what I am going to do is I'm going to speed through this part. It's just going to be a repeat of how I did this one. I considered changing having red be as the base and then a gold swirl, but I think I'm just gonna keep it the way that it is for continuity's sake. So let's just jump right into it, I suppose.
right, time to bring you all in for a close up. So this is what we've got going for us. I'm afraid of how the colors are coming across on the camera because it kind of looks like ketchup and mustard or something, but I think it feels very fall-like. You've got that butterscotchy, yellowy orange, that bright, vivid yellow, that brick red, and then that sugar and spice, which is kind of an in-between color, but I think it turned out very very nice. I actually like the first one that I did a lot better. I think I over swirled the second one just a little bit too much, but I think they're still both very pretty and I cannot wait to cut these in the morning. I will have to go in and clean my edges on the second one. It got thicker than the first batch did, but that's all for this portion of the video. See you all for the cut. Alrighty, we are back the next day to cut this soap we made with the Artemis fragrance. You guys, I love the way that this looks. I don't see any discoloration yet, which is great because normally at this point, I would see dis discoloration starting to happen if there was going to be any. So I'm hoping that by reducing the amount of the fragrance oil that I used, really did contribute to that and they still smell really really good so i'm very happy about that now i want to show you all what this looks like so here's the edges or the outside rather you can see that nice butterscotchy yellow and that nice red it turned out more red today than it was yesterday i feel like but that is fine you know the edges are just standard soap outside and then look at this top you guys oh my gosh is that not gorgeous that yellow especially is so pretty i absolutely love it and the red mica drizzle that i used does look a whole lot like the red that is inside the soap so <laughs> if you like this red color, I recommend getting the Ruby Red or the Sugar and Spice Mica. They are pretty much the same thing. There's not a whole lot of difference, but they are still very pretty. I just wouldn't necessarily order a full size of both of those Micas because they are very similar. But is that top knot beautiful? Oh, I love it. I'm really excited to cut into this and see what we get. And actually, I might need to adjust my soap cutter here. One moment. All right, so actually, it looks like I'm right on the money. It looks strangely skinny to me for some reason, but that's fine. So let's go on and get to cutting. This is actually going to be my second and my third because I have both batches of this to cut that I will be cutting today and then they will go up on the shelf with all of its batch brothers and sisters to be delivered very soon to the customer. All right, first cut. So there's one side and then there's the other. Oh, look at that. Very very pretty. I love that swirl. That's very nice. I know that it looks blurred on camera. This is actually focused. You can see there's a gel ring here. The reason that this looks kind of gelled compared to this area or sort of blurry compared to this area is because this portion gelled and this did not. So that's totally fine. And there is a little bit of discoloration as you can see around the edges. And I actually don't mind it's just a very very tiny bit i don't even know if the camera is going to pick it up it's not the gel portion because i can see very clearly a square outline but there's the top very very nice i'm happy with that so what i'm going to do is i am going to cut this entire batch and then i will speed through cutting the other batch because it's they're practically the same thing the swirls might be a little bit different from each other but i'll make sure to show you all 
every single bar like I always do. I love that top. That yellow is just speaking to me today. <laughs> I don't do many mica drizzle swirls on top of my soaps, but I think that that is going to have to change because it just pops. Oh, not much in that one. I do think that the other loaf is going to have more red in it just based off of the outside, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. You can see a whole lot more red on the outside of the other soap than you can with this one. Ooh, I love these little thin swirls. They're just so pretty. Ooh, I love that top. That's my favorite top, I think, so far. Gonna have to clean this soap cutter so good. It has, you guys, I've put this thing to the test. That is for sure. I highly recommend this soap cutter from Plow Boys. It is excellent. Does exactly what I need it to over and over and over again. No matter how many soaps I cut in a day, it just keeps on a cutting and a trucking and it does a wonderful job. So there's one side, the other. Really, really like these swirls. Very pretty. That top is so pretty. It does look a little bit more like fire than I intended. I was just trying to really bring across some fall colors. I feel like if I had done a drizzle, actually, if I had done a drizzle in orange instead of red, I think that would have made it look more like fire. <laughs> so I think that probably would have been counterproductive even. There's one side, the other. I am loving, loving, loving this soap. I think it's very pretty. I hope she's gonna be happy with it. So far, fingers crossed, knock, knock on wood, all that fun stuff. She has been extremely satisfied with everything that I have brought her. And I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. It's actually a little bit of a miracle. <laughs> but, <clears throat> excuse me she is very easy to please very easy to work with so there's the back of this bar you can see that red really peeking through and then there is the last bar in this batch so I am now going to cut the other batch the other little loaf of soap and we will continue on with that and I don't know what I'm trying to say <laughs> right now. I'm a little bit scatterbrained. I just got home from a hair appointment because my cousin is getting married this afternoon and I have to drive about an hour away to get there and it's in Lexington, Kentucky and Lexington, Lexington is where the University of Kentucky is and of course there's a ball game today, so the traffic is going to be horrible, so I'm sure that it would actually be better if I left about two hours early just to make sure I can get through the traffic. So I'm trying to juggle about a million things in my head right now, but let's move on, shall we?
guys this is the last bar i hope you enjoyed this video please leave me a comment down below tell me what you think about this soap i would love to hear your opinion on it i love it it's just i don't think it's quite coming across as fall the way that i really wanted it to but nevertheless it does indeed smell like fall and it is still very pretty especially that top i am in love with that mica drizzle i'm gonna have to do that more often there's just no way around it but i hope you all oh look it almost looks like a crescent moon doesn't it or a banana or something wow that's giving me some like uncanny valley vibes right there <laughs> anyway that is all that i have for you in this video i hope you all enjoyed if you did please give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you're not already and turn on those notifications so that you never miss it when i upload leave me a comment down below tell me about your day tell me what you've got going on this weekend tell me all about it just say hi i love hearing from you guys i i'm not sure if there's going to be a video up the week that i go to salem or if this will be the video that goes up the week that I go to Salem. But we will have to see. I might even put this one up after I go to Salem. I have no idea what my schedule is going to look like as far as uploads during that week. It's going to be a crazy week. But that's all that I have for you all for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.